Hey, what's going on everybody? Hope everybody's doing well. So for today's video, we're going to talk about how to do the Marquinhos Dumbao. Yeah, it's about to get intense up in here, but you gotta love it. Welcome back to A Percussion Life. My name is Eric Perez. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and that notification button just so you could find out when I upload. And if you're a day one, thank you for coming back and checking out this video. Thank you so much for all the love, the support, the comments, the suggestions. I know you guys have been asking for this video for such a long time, so thank you for your patience. And hit that like button. It helps me out, helps me out with the algorithm so I can continue to do these YouTubes and continue the love. Yeah, but let's get to this video. So Mark Quinones. trying to tell you guys I've been holding out on doing this video for such a long time because it's so hard to talk about this living legend man and this big influencer especially on my generation man every time I see him play it's like he made playing percussion cool like I, I don't know what it is man he he made playing percussion just like cool I, I just I gotta love marking you in all seriousness, this guy has influenced so many players. His unique approach and style kind of like broke the rules or broke protocol. He kind of made it seem like, you know what, you guys have a specific way. Let me try my own way and see if it works. And guess what? It worked. I would say Marquinhos, alongside with Bobby Allende, kind of set a trend and made their own path and ways to create a specific sound that really reinvented the 90s and really reinvented how a lot of people that grew up in the 90s, like myself, heard and listened to music. And it kind of made it hip in a way. I don't know another way to kind of describe their style, but so trendy and ahead of its time. Because if we're really paying attention, if you listen to a lot of like old Mark Anthony and old DLG, that same type of sound alongside with, of course, Sir George, but it's really, you know, the freedom that Mark and Jonas and Bobby Ender were actually given to make this sound. And they're still doing that type of style today. Like people are still trying to emulate them today. It's crazy. But Marquinhos has played or recorded with literally everybody. He's played with Mark Anthony, DLG, La India, Willy Colon, Tito Puente, Celia Cruz, Hector Lavo, Ruben Blades, Victor Manuel, Tony Sukar, the Almen Brothers, Greg Almen and his band. He even plays for his own group called Ocho y Mas. Marquinhos even played with Moses. Yes, Moses from the Bible. That's how he's played with everybody. I'm trying to tell you, he's played with Moses. Literally the diversity in his style is limitless. He's one that I could say that I look up to in regards to, he could play salsa so well and then switch everybody up and go and play with the Almond Brothers. Like, how do you go from salsa to Southern rock? Like, who, who, who does that? See, it's just crazy. Just, just the levels, the levels. It, there's levels to this, and his level is like, you pl put me anywhere and I can play it. Literally. Marquinhos is a guy that you could put him on timbal and he's gonna sound phenomenal. You could put him on bongo and he's gonna sound phenomenal. But when you put him on congas, it's very weird. And, and, and I mean that in the good way, the good weird. You know, the, the, there's a type of weird where you're like, no, that's just me. Mm. But there's a weird where you're still kind of processing what just happened and you can't really explain it because it doesn't make sense. That is Marquinhos because it's a little bit different than how his style in timbal is. Because even though like he's 
unbelievable on timbales and even though he's unbelievable on bongos there's a specific like style that he does on congas where it seems yes effortless but at the same time involves so much feel and marquinhos will tell you you know he doesn't even practice technique or roles or paradotos like he's not about that life he plays what he feels he's not about practicing doubles so you know look at look at us young kids practicing the five stroke role and he's just like yeah i just play what i feel and that's what works again guys it's not about technique it's about feel sometimes we worry so much about technique and being so technically savvy that we completely neglect the feel aspect of playing. And Marquinhos, especially on congas, man, made that so like hard to emulate. And he's one of the people that I feel that it's hard to approach his style. You could see like little flares of it. Uh, Conga Chops actually teaches specific tumbaos that Marquinhos, you know, influenced for a generation. But it's like even hard to say like, man, that's, that's, something mark would do but you don't sound like mark because his style on congas is just that weird it's just on a different level i i always refer him to like a mutant like he just has levels and the way he changes and how he stylizes for one specific song and then can completely change his style on another salsa song it's it's weird and i actually am enjoying i would say this stage of his career where yeah i mean in the 90s and, and early 2000s well he's he's been consistent man consistent consistent but right now what he's doing collaborating with tony sukar like it's it's like he's not really reinventing himself but you could see him just completely ah, i don't know i don't know how to explain it this is hard this is hard it's hard to explain Marking Yonis' style, but you can really see how just his his tone is a little bit different. His his approach is a little bit m even more refined. Like it's just it's just beautiful seeing, at least in this stage of his career, how well he's playing, how much more feeling and freedom I think he has playing and collaborating with Tony Sukar. And guess what? That's got them a Grammy. It's beautiful. And I could go on talking about all of Marquinhos' iconic recordings, all the sounds that he's given us through the years, but this video will take literally 80 hours. That's just this, this, this catalog is not a joke, you know? And I think that he set the bar on what it is to be a career musician and taking every opportunity to just even challenge yourself musically and getting out of the box of being classified just a Latin percussionist because the fact that he went from, you know, playing with Mark Anthony and then playing with the Allman Brothers and then playing with Ocho y Mas and then playing with the Doobie Brothers. Like, it's hard to put him in a box in regards to say, oh, he's just really just good at Latin music. No, he's very, very diverse in his style and his playing. And that is something that I personally look up to because I'm one that plays a lot more contemporary, you know, American, smooth jazz, funk music, where, you know, I'm known to play also tumbaos and being part of certain salsa scenes. So it's like, it, I, I like to be put in a category where it's just a percussionist that if you put me to play african music i could play african music if you put me to play cumbia i want to play cumbia if you put me to play merengue i will try to play merengue like that's kind of where i personally want to be categorized where it's just a percussionist not a latin percussionist but just a percussionist in general and be well versed in all these areas and i think someone like mark is somebody that really really set that pedestal set that bar for us to look up to say man you know eventually i want to get there maybe not there maybe not even halfway because come on now this catalog is crazy man so yeah i do want to share this tumbao with you um I, there's a bunch that i could have picked out but uh again I, I actually enjoy the stage that he's in right now playing with tony sukar and there's a song that i think they released maybe like two years ago or a year ago i don't know 2020 took felt like forever but it was actually from uh tony sukar's last album which is lo que pasa aquí and mark Quinones does something very different building to the chorus and i want to share that with you just a little clip and then try to break it down yeah 
Let me show you that. We don't know, we don't know. Crazy, right? So much feel in such little time. I don't think that pattern has a specific sequence or anything like that. I honestly think he was just feeling the vibes and just vibing with the song, man. It's just crazy, man. Crazy to try to dissect that pattern. So I'm going to try my best to play it and show it for you guys and then try to break it down because, Mark, man, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for this, Mark. It's not going to sound great. Remotely close, probably not even like the song. Sorry, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try my best. But yeah, let me show you the pattern. That's actually pretty hard. Looks simple. Mark, you're crazy, man. Crazy. Unbelievable. So let me try to break this pattern down for you guys. Again, I will put the original song down below where you guys can listen to it, play along, and analyze the craziness that Mark is doing on this song. And like usual, I will slow this pattern down and play it to clave and count it for you guys at the end of the video. I do believe this song is in 3-2 song clave, but again, knowing Mark, breaking the rules, playing this crazy pattern based on feel and just experience. It's beautiful. So what he's actually doing here, he's actually doing three different patterns like a cycle. And uh, what he does actually is just, man, I, I don't know how to describe this, but what, what he's doing is actually moving back and forth, referencing one pattern and then kind of feeling or adding another extra note in the second and third pattern. But let me show you from the beginning what he's actually doing. So if you listen to the song, especially in the beginning, I think we get more of a reference and the feel of what he's actually doing. He actually is playing like shaker and djembe before introducing the congas and he actually starts off using this pattern. So to start this pattern, I think the easiest way, especially because he's actually entering um, kind of differently and entering in a different time, but the best way to actually learn this, I think, is to do it how he's actually continuing this pattern, which is actually with three opens. One open with your non-dominant hand, an open with your dominant hand, and then an open with your non-dominant hand on the conga. So it's gonna sound like this. After doing those three opens, what he does is two opens with his dominant hand on the tumba, and then coming back to the conga, what he actually does is a slight ghost note with his non-dominant hand on the conga, and then an open with his dominant hand on the conga. So it's gonna sound like this. So to put that together, After doing that open, he then goes into doing his very infamous slap. But um, again, it's very unique the way he approaches his slaps. What he does is a bass finger with his non-dominant hand and then a close slap with his dominant hand. But it's subtle what he's doing. It's not really like this. It's not really that noticeable. He kind of holds back a little bit. It's a little bit more aggressive when he goes into the chorus, but for this specific part, he kind of holds back that part so it doesn't make it as noticeable, but that close slap is like right there in your face. So it would sound something like this. So to put everything together to this point, it's gonna sound like this. And 
Now here comes the sabor part. This is the crazy part where it, it just took me a minute, man. I'm like, it looks so simple, but he's doing something weird, man. I'm trying to tell you, all right, all right man. That's some weird plan right there, man. This is what I believe he did. I wish he would break it down because this is crazy. But after doing that close slap, he does a slight finger with his non-dominant hand. And then he kind of does a subtle rest. It's not even like a subtle rest. He may just add another little tap here, but after doing that little finger, what he does is an open with his dominant hand on the tumba, and then another slight ghost note to then go back to do another open on the tumba to then use that leverage to go back to the beginning. Crazy. So let me play it all for you going back to the beginning just so you could kind of get the concept and hear the feeling, the mania, the sabor, the sazon, the cubito, the sufrito, all that. Man, Mark, my gosh. See what I mean? The little double ghost note after doing the close slap. Like, man, ah, uh, it's just crazy. And then he just goes ham after that. He just goes crazy right after that. That is his reference point though. So he's always going to go back to that part while then the next turnaround, what he does is just add more sauce and flavor. So as you saw, after doing that last open on the tumba, I go back to kind of repeating the same part where I go back to doing that single open here. So to kind of refresh you, it's like this. So right after doing that open, we're gonna go back doing the same thing, that same bass finger close slap, but now this is where he kind of changes it up. This is where he decides to do maybe two opens together rather than doing that little space part, or sometimes what he'll do is three opens, but he still goes back to referencing those three opens here on the conga. So to kind of show you the difference right after doing that close slap, it's gonna sound like this. So if you notice, it's a bass finger close slap and then two opens immediately after doing that. And then again, you start off with an open with your non-dominant hand, then an open with your dominant hand, and then an open with your non-dominant hand. And I think this is something I'm just adding, but what I do after doing that last open with my non-dominant hand, I kind of do a close slap or a slight ghost note slap to then going back to doing those two opens in the beginning that we do how we started off this pattern. To kind of show that again, it's gonna sound like this. Kind of weird, but it helps me and helps me kind of fit this pattern. So to kind of show me going back and forth with this concept, it's gonna sound like this. Crazy. I know, man. Every time I look at him, I'm just like, gosh, Mark, 
why are you so good? But aside from doing that pattern, he also does the pattern where he adds kind of like three notes. So he starts off the same way on that two note pattern here, but he actually adds just an extra note and kind of adjusts what he's doing here on the conga. So to kind of show that going from the close slap, it's gonna sound like this. Who comes up with this stuff, man? Seriously, Mark. Yeah, let me uh, kind of play around with, again, that reference point where there's those little rests on the two opens here, then going into the three opens on the tumba. It's gonna sound like this. trying to tell you guys mark mark and Jonas is on a different level things differently things differently completely different wow yeah let me play it all together let me just try again mark again i'm sorry dude sorry man try my best here trying my best here play that the more I cannot wait to try it on an actual song but I doubt it will sound remotely the same yeah let me play it slow for you guys counting it and playing it to clave where I think it fits best in and how I think you guys may understand the feel a little bit more but again listen to that song guys listen to Tony Sukar Lo que pase aquí, and listen to what Marquinhos is doing. It's just, it's just crazy. Vibes, vibes. But yeah, let me count it slow for you guys, so you guys can kind of get the little, little spices that I'm doing. One, two, three, four. 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 One, two. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. 
all right y'all really do hope you guys enjoy this video man my goodness in all seriousness mark and Jonas is a guy that we need to talk about as one of the greatest percussionists period one of the greatest recording percussionists one of the greatest live percussionists just just unbelievable man i've just you hear rumors you hear stories about his recording sessions and the things that he comes up with and the style that he has again i hope to to meet him one day and um just just talk i just want to ask him like man can i just have a quarter of your brain and for a day just so i could come up with some craziness that he does man it's just again it's very awesome to to see this and to try to dissect it and to to really grow up listening to him and hear him play and hear how he just man just changed the game and still changing the game still still changing the game and don't worry you can't talk about Mark Inez without talking about Bobby Allende so eventually I will do a video on Bobby Allende but even Bobby Allende I can't I can't man have you seen how Bobby Allende plays like like the most perfect hand posture ever in the world like who who my goodness these guys I'm trying to tell you mutants mutants they just have extra superpowers ah unbelievable but all right y'all again i do hope you guys enjoyed this video comment down below let me know what you guys think y'all already know what to do like subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video have a great day